This project grew directly out of my experience. I have lived in Australia since I was 13, but only in my 70s did I manage to get up to the top end of Australia, to the Kimberleys and the Kakadus. And I was absolutely taken back by the grandeur, by the beauty, by the scale of that landscape, the colors, the sounds. Somehow, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, how could we represent that in a different way? Now, the outback has been painted, photographed, filmed by indigenous and non-indigenous artists since generations that I wasn't interested in. But the sound captivated me. And also around that time, internationally, there was an interest in sound art. So the two coincided. I made some inquiries. Who are the leading sound artists in the world? I was advised that I should contact Stephen Vitiello, an American, who just did a beautiful work called The Bells for New York's High Life. So I contacted Stephen, and he was very interested in doing a project. He came to Australia, and he spent on two visits, two to three weeks, exploring the Kimberleys of Western Australia, recording the wind, recording the water, recording the sound of the wildlife, camping out at night, being in a small boat, so he really immersed himself into the outback. He had a guide who knew the area well and came back with a great amount of recordings to then put together into work. As with all projects, the success depends on the artist, the work they produce, and the site where it's shown. And to show sound was a challenge. But we were fortunate that we found in Sydney Park, abandoned, the 1840s convict-built brick kilns. There were three of them, and they were in pretty bad shape. But the city of Sydney cleaned them out and repaired them for us. And we had three different soundscapes in each of the three kilns. And we went to a lot of trouble. We imported red earth from Broome truckloads to represent the Kimberleys. We brought in white sand to represent the shoreline. And the combination of the kilns and the sound created a wonderful atmosphere. <laughs> Stephen also did a completely different work for the art gallery called The Birds. And it was hidden at the entrance so as you came in, you heard these bird songs all over the entrance to the gallery. It's interesting how international artists are engaged with Australian bird songs. Michael Landy, who stayed several times in Australia, said Australian birds are so annoying. They're not as refined as our British birds. And Stephen Vitiello found also Australian birds sounding very, very different to those that are in the United States. Stephen also did a master class with Australian sound artist at the Art Gallery of New South Wales, coordinated by my nephew, Evan Caldo. All in all, I think it was a very successful way to make sound concrete.